Hello, everyone. Welcome to our NCE training courses. I'm Lei from North Star. Our training is starting soon. We will spend three courses to explain how to solve the common problem when configure an LED screen. And today is the first troubleshooting course, and the topic is blackout issue. To provide you a good training environment, we sincerely suggest you to keep your audio on mute mode during the whole session. Please scan the QR code or click the link at the chat room to sign in. If you can't click the link, please copy and paste it to your browser. Feel free to leave your questions that are related to this topic on the chat room. We will reply you later on the Q&A session. If you have any other questions that are not about this topic, please feel free to send an email to nce at northstar.tech. Now let's welcome Jenny. She is today's trainer. Hello, everyone. Glad to see you again. This is Jenny from Novastar. Welcome to our NCE training course. First, I'd like to start with the introduction of our NCE training to the guys who are not much familiar. The full name of our NCE is a Novastar Certified Engineer. We have trained more than 3,000 individuals all over the world since it started in 2014. By giving multiple courses and uh, valuable chances to embrace the LED control system, our NCE courses enable you to operate and maintain the equipment independently. Because of the new coronavirus, this year we hold the training online. So we are hoping more techniques could get the knowledge and the certification, even in its hard time. Okay, now our NCE will have uh, eight courses and a final examination. You could get the online training certification if you sign in for six courses at least and pass the final examination. Okay, at last, I hope you guys could go to all the courses and make a good score. Okay, today we will spend one hour together. During this time, I'll show you the troubleshooting blackout issues. And we also have Q&A time after my presentation. Okay, let's start. So before we talk about today's topic, the blackout issue, first, let's be friends with our receiving card. I guess maybe someone have a question in your mind. Why, why I need to be friends with the receiving card? It is because from the receiving card indicator lights, we can get a lot of useful information of our screen. Okay, let's say it together. Okay, here I'll show you some situations of the receiving card indicator lights. I'll show you a short video. Here we can see from the short video, the receiving card green light indicator flashes once a second. Let's say again. So this situation, it means our receiving card works normally. Okay, let's see the second situation. Also a short video for you. Here we can see from the short video, the receiving card green indicator, the receiving card green indicator lights flashes very fast. So it flashes four times in half second, and then it flashes again four times after half second interval. Okay, let's say again. It flashes very fast, four times half a second. So this situation, it means our receiving card works normally, but it is in the backup mode. Okay, let's see the third situation. Also a short video for you. Here we can see from the short video, the receiving card Green indicator lights flashes very slow, so it flashes 
once for five seconds. Let's say again. So this situation, it means the network cable is not connected. So maybe we need to change another network cable. Okay, let's say the last situation. In this short video, we can see the receiving card green indicator light flashes very fast and it flashes three times in half second and then it flashes again three times after half second interval. Okay, let's say again. So this situation, it means there is no signal input. Okay, let me do a small summary here. Now, all these situations, it's uh, uh, the situation I just show you. Here, the first one, the green light flashes uh, four times a second, so it means our receiving card works normally, but it is in the backup mode. And the second, the light flashes uh, once a second, so it means our receiving card works normally. And the third one, the green light flashes very slow, and it flashes uh, once for five seconds. So this means the network cable disconnected. And the last one, the green light flashes, uh, the green light flashes uh, three times half second. So this means there is no signal input. Okay, remember all these situations because it is very important in the folding part of my presentation. Okay, here, if you are still wondering what the video looks like, I'll show you some vivid description like this. This is uh, from uh, one of our customer by Andy Sim. So if you're interested in this, you can take a picture here. I think it is uh, very easy to understand and then I need to share with you. Okay, now let's go back to today's topic, the screen blackout issue. So when we are talking about the screen black issue, so we need to divide it into two situations. The first one is the full screen blackout. Like this, the whole screen is black. And the second is part of the screen blackout. There are three situations. The first one, the specific cabinet is black. And the second, the specific module is black. And the third, the sending card output area is black. Okay, then what could cause the blackout issue? So if you want to locate the possible reasons, first we need to take a look at the basic structure of the LED control system. So in the first course, I have uh, show you the basic structure of our LED control system. Let's review it. Here we can see the control computer is connected to the sending controller by the USB cable or the Ethernet cable. And at the same time, the control computer need to provide the video source to the sending controller. Okay, but sometimes we need a video processor to deal with the video source before providing it to the sending controller, such as the scaling function or the rotating function. 
and then the sending controller is connected to the LED display from the Ethernet cables from different output port. Regarding the end of the LED display, it is composed of many LED cabinets. Okay, and we know in each cabinet, there is a receiving card and a hub card connected to the LED module through the flight cable. Okay, so this is the basic structure of the LED control system. So all the factors can be the possible reason that can cause the blackout issue. As I have uh, just showed you, the blackout issue can be divided in two situations. The first one is the full screen blackout. And the second is the part of the screen blackout. So let's check them one by one. First, let's say the full screen blackout. Here, we have a table for you to help you understand the full screen blackout issues. We can see the potential cost details, and then we can get a solution. Okay, so for the full screen blackout issue, we can check six cores. The screen power, brightness value, Ethernet cable, sending card, video source, and the receiving card. Okay, let's check it out one by one. So for the screen power, the simplest but the most overlooked problem is the power. So make sure your screen is powered on. And sometimes if we have the uh, insufficient power supply, so in this case, we need to change the power supply. Okay, and for the screen blackout issues, we need to check the second course, the brightness value. Maybe sometimes the brightness of our screen is 0%. So in this case, we need to increase, this, increase, increase the brightness maybe, maybe to 50%. And in our software or on the front panel from the uh, sending controller, then we can get if it is the brightness value that caused the blackout issue. Okay, and also in the LCD software, in the screen control interface, we need to check if we do the setting is blackout. So if it is, we need to change the setting to normal. Okay, for the Ethernet cable, sometimes if it is loose or if there is something wrong, so we need to reconnect or change another Ethernet cable. Then let's go to the sending card part. The first important thing is the power. So make sure the sending card is powered on. And the second, we need to check if we select the wrong input. So this means maybe in the hardware structure, we select HDMI as the input. But in the software part, maybe we choose the DVI or some other input as the source. So make sure we select the corresponding input source. Okay, and we also need to check the input source interface. If there is something wrong, we need to change another interface. But sometimes maybe there is not enough interface. So in this case, maybe we need to change the sending card. Okay, and for the video source part, first we need to check if the source is black. So if it is, we need to, we need to change the source. And also the second is the 
cable connection, it is the same as the Ethernet cable. So if there is something wrong, we need to reconnect or change the cable. Okay, and the third one is the compatibility. So this means if sometimes there is something wrong with our sending card firmware program file. So we need to upgrade the sending card firmware program file. And sometimes maybe the video source format is not correct. So we need to change the video source. Okay, the last one, we need to check the receiving card part. We need to check two things, the RCFTX file and the firmware program file. So if there is something wrong with this uh, two file, we need to send the original RCFTX file or recreate the RCFTX file. And also we need to upgrade the correct firmware. Okay, after we got all this point, let's say the systematic method. So when the full screen blackout issues happened, we can make a preliminary judgment from the receiving card light. First, let's check the receiving card red indicator light. Okay, so if the receiving card red indicator light is off, it means there is something wrong with the power. So in this case, we need to check and maybe we need to replace the power supply. And if the receiving card red indicator light is on, so the power is okay, there is no problem of the power supply. So in this case, we need to check some other possible reasons. So here, we need to be friends with our receiving card. As I have uh, just uh, showed you at the beginning, we need to check the receiving card green indicator lights. So there are three situations. Let's check. The first one. If the receiving card gray indicator lights flashes very slow, so it flashes uh, once for five seconds. So this means there is something wrong with the Ethernet cable. So we need to check the Ethernet cable, or maybe we need to change another one. And at the same time, we also need to check the sending card part. It is because if there is something wrong with the sending card, then the receiving card cannot get any signal from the sending card. So the, the screen is black. Okay, the third, the second situation. If the receiving card green indicator lights flashes very fast, it flashes three times after half a second interval. So this means there is no signal input. We need to check the video source input. And the third situation, if our receiving card green indicator lights flashes normal, it flashes uh, once a second. So it means our receiving card works normally. But if in this case, the screen blackout issue is still occur, so we need to check some uh, other possible reasons. Like we need to check the receiving card firmware program file, or we need to check the receiving card RCFGX file, and to see if there is something wrong with these two files. And also, we need to check the brightness value. Make sure your brightness value is not 0%, and also make sure in the software, the screen control with you, the setting is normal. Okay, after we find all the problems, then we can get the solution. And then 
the blackout issue can be solved. Okay, so all this I have already shown you is not the only systematic method. So I just uh, provide you the suggestion conference. After we got all the points, we can go to the previous table and check the solution. Okay, now let's say part of the screen blackout issue. So this issue can be divided into three situations. The sending card output level, cabinet level, and the module level. So for the sending card output level, we first we need to check the screen power. And if the first cabinet power is, is fault, and the screen power of that output port is trip or fault. So in these two cases, we need to change the power supply. And also, we need to check the Ethernet cable. If it is loose or there is something wrong, we need to reconnect or change another one. And for the sending card, we need to check the output port. If there is something wrong, we need to change the output port, but if there is a not enough output port, so we need to change another sending card. Okay, and for the cabinet level, first, it is very important to check the power supply. If there is something wrong, we need to change another one. And the Ethernet cable, it is the same as before. So if there is something wrong, reconnect or change a new one. And for the receiving card part, we need to check the RCFGX file and the firmware file. If there is something wrong, we need to read from a normal receiving card and send to this receiving card. And we need to upgrade the correct firmware. And maybe in some uh, special cases, there is something wrong with the receiving card. So I think I ha we have to change a new receiving card. And for the hub board, it is the same as the receiving card. If there is something wrong, we need to change a new hub board. Okay, for the third situation, the module level, the first important thing is to check the power supply. So if there is something wrong, we change the power supply or the power cable. And for the hub board, if uh, the hub board disconnected or there is something wrong, we need to change to other connectors or we need to change a new hub board. And also the flight cable, it is the same as the Ethernet cable. If it is loose or there is something wrong, we need to reconnect or change another cable. Okay, after got this point, let's see the systematic method. So when part of the screen blackout issue happens on the specific output port of the sending card, then we need to exchange to another output port. So after this operation, if the issue stays on the same output port, so it means there is something wrong with the output, with this output port. In this case, we need to check the output port interface and maybe we need to check the sending card. And also we need to check the power supply. It is because if a uh, there is something wrong with the cabinet power supply, then the receiving card cannot get any signal from the sending card. So the screen is also black. And if we exchange to another output port and the issue switch to a new output port, so this means there is uh, no problem with uh, this output port. So in this case, we need to check the Ethernet cable to see if there is some problems. Okay, and for the second situation, if part of the screen blackout issue happens on a specific cabinet, 
we need to check the power supply, the Ethernet cable, receiving card, and the firmware program file, RCFGX file. If all these issues are confirmed, then we can get the solution. If the issue are not confirmed, then we need to exchange the easy receiving card with a normal one. So after this operation, if the issue switches to a new cabinet, it means there is something wrong with our receiving card. So we need to check the receiving card. And after this operation, if the issue stays on the same cabinet, it means our receiving card is okay. So we need to check some uh, other possible reasons like the cabinet hardware fault and the hub board fault to, to get the detailed problems. Okay, and the third situation, if part of the screen blackout issue happens on a specific module, so we need to check the power supply, the flight cable, and the hub board socket and get the solution. Okay, after all these points are checked, we can get a solution, and then the issue can be solved. Okay, so let me do a summary here today. Today we have learned the receiving card green indicator light. So when it is works normal, the green indicator light flashes uh, once a second. And when our receiving card in the backup mode, the green indicator light flashes very fast. It flashes uh, four times at uh, half a second intervals. And uh, if the network cable is disconnected, the green indicator light flashes once in five seconds. And if there is no signal input, the green indicator light flashes uh, very fast. It flashes uh, three times at half a second intervals. And also, we learned the screen blackout issues. It can be divided into two situations. The first one is the full screen blackout issue. So we need to check the receiving card indicator lights first. And the second situation is part of the screen blackout. The sending card output level, cabinet level, and the module level. So these two, we need to use the cross validation to check the problem. Okay, after all these are checked, then we can go to the troubleshoot table, the previous table, then we can find the final solution. Okay, today it's very special. I have a homework for you. The first one, what is the receiving card indicator lights status when there is no signal source input or work in the backup mode or no signal? And the second one, what if there is one cabinet on the screen is blackout? What could be the possible reason and how can we do the troubleshooting? Okay, these two homework are for you. It is uh, very important related to the final examination. And in the next class, I'll check your answer. You don't, you don't need to upload your answer to us. Okay, you can take a picture here. So this is uh, auto training for today. Thank you for your attention. And also we need your feedback here. And we will record a video and uh, upload it to our Novastar YouTube channel.
So if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us at nce at novastar.tech. And you can also leave a message at the chat room. What's more, you can go to our website and get some more information like the software operation, such as the smart settings for a regular module and the redundancy settings. The redundancy settings Dan has told you in the third course. And also you can find the product solution series, such as the cloud-based platform, C1 and N9, and our Nova Pro UHD Junior. Okay, the way you can find it is uh, you can go to our Novastar web tech website and get into the support and the training part and then get into Novastar online workshops. Then you can find the things you need. Okay, thank you for today. So let's get into our Q&A time. I'll hand over this part to our experienced technical engineer, Lei. He'll answer all the questions you have posted on the chat room. And you can still post the question you want to know if you like. Okay, now we will take around one minute to get all this ready. Thank you.